Here's a peek at what guests had to say after the show. We're back on the internet. Would the U.S. be better off, Christian, with a parliamentary system in terms of legislative effectiveness and constituency representation? Whoa. Well, I don't think it's my job to pretend I'm smarter than the founding fathers who we've just said are so smart. Mm -hmm. Having said that, I think a parliamentary system, which we have... Well, you know who, said, we you know who did say that? Chief Justice, not Chief Justice, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg said if we were starting again, we would, we would should... I think we have both it. have experience of it, and what's great about it is when you elect a majority in Parliament, that majority can act. I once uh, spoke to Paul Martin, who had been our finance minister, and Bob Rubin, and Paul said that he called Bob up. They were talking about some financial matter, and uh, Bob said, well, what are you up to, Paul? And he said, oh, well, I just presented my budget to Parliament today. And Bob said, oh, you know, how long is it going to get you, how long will it take you to get that budget through the legislature? And he said, oh, we did it today. We yeah. just vote on it. I present it. And also, we talk about it. We vote on it. And also, done. there's no real lame ducks, right? People don't hang around for a long time in a parliamentary system after they're ineffective. Unless, except Israel. They just recycle again and again. Well, now, why do you know, why do you say that? Well, almost everyone who's been prime minister is still alive is a member of parliament, and almost every member of right. parliament will eventually be prime minister. They, I, they have a kind of a road. But I mean, deal. the government can fall with, they get rid of the guy and still the, right. the, yeah, I mean, there's no Nixons. That, that situation would never happen in a parliamentary system. The Chris Christie situation might go on in New Jersey, because Chris Christie, as I was about to say, uh, <laughs> looks like that, Did David, I ever tell that you? David Wildstein guy is throwing him under the bus. Wow. And if you thought That's traffic was blocked before. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon. I'm sure you are. Wow. Speaking of uh, how the government works, wouldn't it be, make more sense for government oversight hearings to be held by a neutral body, say the judicial branch, rather than Congress, which is always partisan? Oh, well, two you, things. You, you two can things. lose your no, job. These are, no, these are great. Two things. First of all, the opposition in Britain, the minority, actually does the, the, the key, the uh, oversight. Their committee is in fact charged by the minority. But second of all, uh, we have the General Accountability Office and the Inspector Generals, and those are comparatively neutrals. One's in the executive branch, one's in the legislative branch. The vast majority of what you see us doing in oversight comes from the Inspector Generals, who actually are in the executive branch. The presentation is adversarial, but the fa underlying facts normally, like the IRS investigation, I had asked the Inspector General to pick that up, and that's really where the report on targeting conservative groups came from. It came from an executive branch appointee. But as we know, they didn't, they didn't target just conservatives. Oh, yes, they did. No, they did Oh, didn't. yeah. No, you know, no, no. You know, you, you can continue to have that, but the facts as of today show that the targeting not did we send out a note, but the targeting was strictly these Tea Party groups that got well, these that's because delays. Tea Party. <laughs> that's because the Tea Party groups have names like fuck the IRS. <laughs> so, of course, the, the IRS is going to look into a, that a little more. Just like when police get a letter that says, I want to kill police, <laughs> they look into that a little more than the one that says, I want to kill hookers. <laughs> but they normally have, I want to live for the Constitution. Uh, but but okay. the, the, fact, the fact is, though, that it sounds like it's, you know, Henry Waxman and I went back and forth very yes. much trying to get to the truth. But when Henry was in the minority, in the majority in the House against Bush, he was very effective. And, and, and one of the reasons was, quite frankly, that he was looking for fault in an administration. Every oversight committee should look fa for fault in every administration. Right. That's the only way you, really, you keep a country clean. But at some point, don't you have to let it go? When, I mean, like, I don't want to say the bad word, Benghazi, but, you know, <laughs> at some point, I, I mean, it's just plain that, you know, a bad thing happened, but you have to work backwards from President Blackenstein is evil to, <laughs> to really believe. I, I still don't know. I still can't hear anybody on your side succinctly tell me what the scandal is there. But, but also, in, in that case, and I think actually the same is true, uh, somewhat ironically, of the furor over Chris Christie and 2016 prospects, right. both sides run the risk of overplaying their hands 
and focusing on a substance-free speculative conversation about 2016 prospects I agree. instead of focusing on the nitty-gritty difficult questions raised by both of those situations. And I, there are I know. real questions. I, I mean, I'm a fan of MSNBC, but they look <laughs> like one of those nature shows where the pack of hyenas are taking down a warthog. And I'm starting to feel bad for the warthog, you know? I mean... I'm not going to ask which party is which in this metaphor. I think we're just going to leave that no, out there. No, ask who is the warthog. The warthog right? is Chris Christie. <laughs> in that metaphor, yes, absolutely. Look, I think MSNBC is reporting on Chris Christie. If you actually look at it, if you look at what Chris, Steve Kornacki did and others did, is very fact-driven. I'm, I'm not saying it's not fact-driven. Absolutely it is. And I hate uh, that false equivalency. Fact, MSNBC, one of the great things about it, and I am a fan, is that they are scrupulous fact checkers, whereas Fox News are scrupulous fact maker uppers. <laughs> <laughs> but one other thing I like but about, I the big, the about MSNBC, one, one thing I like about that network is that they <laughs> tell me about important stuff, and I feel like this story has crowded out a lot of other news that's more important. I think it's a problem nationwide to the extent that it has been a conversation about what's going to happen in 2016. We've got problems right now. And I'm just we need saying, to focus on those. Don't I don't, I don't, don't think become MSNBC them. is the root of that problem. Don't become them. Don't be obsessive. It, I, I don't think MSNBC has been the worst of that. Like, it, it worked in terms of ratings. Isn't that what drives this? Of course. That's what <laughs> drives look, everything. It was a conversation <laughs> worth having, and to an extent it needed to be covered. I think that yes. was done fastidiously on MSNBC's air. I don't think they're the root well, of the you problem are you're talking about. He's going to keep his show, I was just going to say, you no, are... No, but I agree with you about the problem, which is true across the board about over-speculation about an election that is a ways off, and we don't know how much these situations are going to impact us. So got the job. <laughs> Bill, succinct, Benghazi. Senator Feinstein releases a report only a few days ago that casts blame on many parts of the government, some of which there's still a question of if there's another threat like that, will the military, will the State Department be able to react? So the story of Benghazi is four people died. Let's make sure it doesn't happen again. And quite right. frankly, Senator... Well, if, Senator that, if that's what you had been saying all along, we wouldn't even be having a conversation. But the story of Benghazi that's is not also what I heard you Congress that's what more people spending to our embassy. Not make it happen again. That's actually, what, that's actually what you've heard, not what you've heard me say. Oh, no. I, I have been talking about that. I, I, I'll, I'll give you every quote I've made. Regardless of that, the question is, in all these, these embassies, particularly in, in Africa, vast area large in the United States, do we have a plan in place to make sure there's either sufficient security or these facilities aren't there? Men and women will die in support of our nation's diplomacy. The question is, are the systems in place to minimize that debt? Ambassador uh, Chris Stevens was a career professional. He knew the risk. That's all true. But at the same time, in retrospect, we could have done a better job. We need to do a better job in the future. Let's, lend, let's end on that note. Do a better job in the future. Reaching across the aisle and protecting Americans. All right. Thank you, everybody. Real Time with Bill Maher. Ask Bill and his guests your questions right after the show at HBO.com or on Twitter.